So your fiance has a habit of lying, has a pattern, you said. Yes. Um, we have been together for four and a half years. And the first couple of years was pretty rocky. And there was a lot of lying during that time. We separated for a while and got back together. And he was this changed person, did a lot of counseling, all this stuff. And it's been great for about almost a year now. And then now I've caught him in a couple of lies again recently. So I'm struggling. <laughs> So what was he lying about in the beginning? Uh, his whereabouts. So like where he would be. Um, and then it would come out later where he would slip up and I'd be like, oh, well, didn't you say you were here? And then that's how I discovered that. Um, he would say he'd be at home and then wasn't. And just all these different little lies here and there and stuff that isn't a big deal to me. Like you want to go golfing with your buddies. Like, why are you lying about that? I don't understand. And um, it's never been a problem. And for some reason he feels the need to lie. So then I seem to think that there's more to it. If you're going to lie about something so small, like my mind starts to go a little bit, I guess. Right. Of course. Um, of course, like this is golfing with the buddies. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, I mean, it's kind of like a little kid, right? Did you eat the chocolate chips? No, you know, it's chocolate yeah. all over your mouth. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so there's, there's kind of like this, you know, what's coming to my mind is why does he think there's a parent child dynamic? Mm -hmm. I, we had a lot of issues before. And then, yeah, like I said, this last year, it's been completely new relationship. He uh, proposed to me in December and it's been going really great. He's been showing up in all these wonderful ways. And, um, this was part of the reason why I broke it off before is because there was a lot of inconsistency and he was unwilling to commit and a couple of things. And yeah, it's been going great. And now I see it's kind of reverting back to um, what it was before in a sense. And I'm just kind of worried that it's going to continue to go on that because I'm doing, I'm showing up in all the ways that I know that he needs and what he's told me he needs. And so I just don't understand where the line is coming from because if I already have, feelings of distrust from before this is now bringing those up again because when he was caught lying before like I was correct in how I was feeling and there was a lot like some shadiness going on and yeah. you know blurred lines around other women and stuff too and like I'm just worried that it's going to go down that road again and so I don't, yeah. I don't feel yeah. like I'm ready to leave right at this exact moment but I want to prevent it from getting worse right uh, so, and this is one thing that I was curious about, and, and you, you didn't mention until this point, right, is was any of this lying having to do with anything about other women? Yes, we were sort of on a break, but we were working on things. And then there was other women involved that he would hide from me, of course. Um, and I found out later on. So his word and his oh. actions didn't really align a lot. Outside of the break, this interactions with other women? Uh, while we were together, there was some questionable moments, but I don't know for sure, really. Um, but while we were sort of on a break, there was like, we basically broke up. And then that evening he went and was with somebody else where I didn't think we were that broke up and he did. So like, there's a very mm -hmm. blurred line around that. And then yeah. with all of the dishonest, like a little lies here and there and not words, not matching actions and stuff. It was really hard for me before. And I ended up leaving because it wasn't in alignment with what I want out of my relationship. And then this go around has been great. And then now it's creeping in again. And I just don't understand like why he's choosing to do that. Like, is this like a self sabotage thing? Like, I don't really, I don't know. <laughs> Cause it's been great on my end. Maybe he doesn't feel the same though. Like, I'm not sure. Um, so this woman that he hooked up with the night that you guys quasi broke up, not as much as you thought broke up. Um, he knew her before that night or did he just go pick up somebody that night? He went and picked somebody up that night. Um, and then he had actually, after we had got back together, he had saved her number in his phone under a man's name, which I later oh. found out. <laughs> so okay. that when we had a rocky time later on, he did end up meeting up with her again. So. Right. Um, and it's possible, you know, he, you say that he found her that night. It's possible that he knew her before that night, but you didn't know that. Yeah, potentially for sure. So he already had her lined up 
and maybe he'd already even been with her. It's it's who knows because there's lying and there's inconsistency and there's hiding and there's shadiness um, in relation to other women. So the depths of this is unknown. What we do know is that there are massive red flags when it comes to uh, him wanting the attention of other people, not being devoted to you and not being honest with you. Um, yeah. And, you know, you, you basically have one out of four years, one year out of four, where he's showing model behavior. And, and I kind of want to stress showing model behavior because it's, I mean, if, if this is one year out of four, it's hard to say he's changed. Maybe he just got better hiding his tracks, mm -hmm. um, better not getting caught, um, better like, you know, as good as a woman. Yeah. <laughs> we, if women, let's be honest here, as a sociologist, uh, you know, the stats are in. Women cheat as much as men do statistically, but women just don't get caught because they're less boastful and we're better multi think women are really good detectives to be honest <laughs> and our uh -huh, intuition is true. on point <laughs> yes so now here's the thing he was good for a year and now he's lying again has have yeah. you caught him in at least three lies since he was good for that one year no it's been uh no there's just been this one where he now i recently found out he lied about his whereabouts and so um yeah, this is the first time, but obviously my head starts to spiral and spin, right? So yeah, um, that I'm worried that it's going down that. And so we had a discussion around it and I asked him why he chose to lie. Like, I'm, I don't care if you're with your friends. He told me he was at a work meeting, actually. And I found out he was actually golfing. So why would you... I don't care. He golfs all the time and it's never a problem. It's not like I'm hard on him for golfing. It's just this one time he chose to lie and I asked him why. And he said, I don't have an answer for you. Sorry. And walked away. So does he even know why he's doing it? Like, I'm not sure. Here's the thing. The reason why is irrelevant. The reason why is irrelevant the reason okay. why it's it, because it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change the fact. The fact is he's dishonest with you. The fact is when you ask him why, he gaslights you and walks away. Oh, no. That's bullshit. Of course he knows. Yeah. Of course he knows. Um, so the fact is he has a pattern of lying. The fact is... Um, he he likes to pull the wool over your eyes and do things behind your back. And those things involve other women. Um, well, they haven't in a really long, like that's been about three years since that episode happened. But right. yes, it has happened within our relationship. Just not in a very long time. And a woman that he used to have sex with under a man's name so that he can contact her incognito. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we, we yeah. got to state it for what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. So this this is somebody who is dishonest. Um, so the best, best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. This pattern that is represented itself over and over will continue to be represented in your relationship. It's not going away. This is who this person is, right? It's not going away. You didn't detect it for a year. Here it is. Yeah. It's not going away. It will continue. You will continue to have these situations with him. And you're going to confront him and he's going to go, oh, no. And he's going to walk away. Because he doesn't want to take accountability. He doesn't want to own his behaviors. He doesn't want to take responsibility for his behaviors. Um, I think he probably gets a certain kick out of lying to you yeah maybe he originally before uh like in the beginning of our relationship when there was lies I asked him why at that point and he said he was scared of my reaction because I guess there was a few times where he did something was honest with me and I I did get upset the best way to future behavior is past behavior if you are ready to enter a marriage where you will regularly because this isn't going away where you're going to regularly be having these conversations where you say 
why did you lie to me? You said this, but I found out this was the truth. And he goes, oh, no. are you, is that the marriage that you want? No, absolutely not. And that's why I'm having major hesitations right now. Like, do you think that um, it's impossible for someone to improve on those behaviors? Or this is just point blank. This is who he is and how it's always going to be. This is who he is. He has okay. presented, right? Yeah. Um, he has presented. This is somebody who doesn't have a good relationship with the truth. And, and maybe it's situational. Maybe it's just in relation to you um, that you, you know, maybe you're the only one he lies to. I don't know, but we mm -hmm. know that he does lie to you. Yeah. And then he doesn't take responsibility for it. Yeah. So this lack of ownership and responsibility is as distressing as the lie itself, because it just leaves you going, because basically what he's saying is take it. This is what I do, right? When you say, why did you lie to me? And he goes, oh, no. And he walks off. This is him going, deal with it. Not my problem, your problem. If you have a problem with my lying, it's your problem to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm starting, I don't want to be in a relationship where I have to constantly second guess somebody's word. Like I, I don't want to yeah. live like that. Like I don't. <laughs> so yeah. I'm just yeah. having a really hard time because, you know, like I said, yeah, maybe I haven't picked up on him lying this whole time, but it's been like a year of bliss and it's been, he's shown up and he's been great in every other way. There's been zero issues. And then this is out of the blue again. I'm like, holy shit. Like I yeah. just... I feel blindsided to be honest. So. Yeah. And when, you know, like, like he lied before and you broke up with him and he went to therapy, right? Yes. And then you guys had to talk about getting back together. What was your negotiation when you guys talked about getting back together? Did you set a standard? I'm going to come back with you. But you need to tell me the truth. No more lying. Did you set that standard? Absolutely. Yeah, it was four months of him continually trying, going to therapy um, and trying to be back with me. And I I said no until I finally felt like, okay, like he's shown up for the last little bit. He's doing all this work. He got a different job. He's, you know, did all these different things to basically flip his life upside down and become a better version of himself. And so I decided to give him another chance. And absolutely, we had to talk about complete transparency, because in order to build trust back, you have to be transparent. I don't want there to be any lies, any anything. Um, I don't want there to be any issues like around like, I want to feel like I'm supported, right? So if I need you that you're able to be there for me, like within reason, of course, but um, yes, there's absolutely standards set. And um now, now there's this. So, hmm. and even though he says that he doesn't understand um, why it's such a big deal that he didn't realize that they were going to go ahead and do that. But then it's like, but I asked you and then you lied, like directly lied mm -hmm. to me. So, <laughs> um, so uh, suppose by his story, there was supposed to be a meeting, but there was golf with buddies instead. So he said he was going to a meeting um, and then he, so part of his building trust thing was he's like, I'll put my location on my phone and you can whatever, like as far as like you can trust me to be, I'm going to be where I say I'm going to be and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, sure. And so I had looked to see if he was on his way home yet because I was making dinner and that's, and I don't look at it very often, but like he's 45 minutes away and I was cooking dinner and I just checked to see um, and I saw that he was golfing. I'm like, Oh, interesting. Okay. So I sent him a message and I said, um, Hey, just wondering when your meeting's done. And he said, it's done in 15 minutes. And I'm like, interesting. Okay. But I didn't want to jump to conclusions. And so he came home and I said, how was your meeting? And he said, um, Oh, it was great. We just ate pizza and sat around. I said, okay. Like, did you guys get up to anything else? Nope. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I looked to see if you're on your way home yet. Cause I was making dinner and I saw you were golfing. Like, why not just say that? And he's like, well, and then that's when he's like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, and he just kind of blanked. But before these lies around that, like he was actually doing other things. And like, 
So I don't really care that it's a small lie. Like to me, it's a big deal. It means more than just what that was, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So he had ample opportunity to tell you the truth and decided to lie to your face. Yeah. I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt and I didn't want to assume or anything like that. So that's why I asked. And when I said, hey, do you know when your meeting's done? I asked him that while he was on the course and he didn't say, oh, we decided to go for a round, be home shortly. Like it was none of that stuff. It was just, yeah, we're still in the meeting. We just sat here and ate pizza and sat around. So then it's like, did you have other people golfing with you now that you don't want me to know about? Like, that's where my mind goes. Like, what was actually the reason behind lying about something so stupid <laughs> and small? So, yeah. 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 Um, and so when you said, is this who he is? Is he not going to change? That's your answer. Yeah. That's your answer. Like I said, the best predator of future behavior is past behavior. Look at what he did. And I want you to say to yourself, he's going to do this for as long as I'm with him. I want you to see how he looked at you with this earnest look, like he's telling you the truth, how he said, oh, blah, 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 we just had pizza, like created a story. I want you to remember in your mind, bring this up right now. Did he say that like it was a fact? Yeah. Did he say that like, like you should believe this? Like, yeah, that's just what we did. Uh, and maybe they did. Maybe during their meeting they did have that because like, I don't know. But then they chose to go golfing after and he just avoided that entire thing and stayed longer. So, but yeah, he did. When he, I said, did you guys get up to anything else? Like, no, absolutely not. And I said, okay, well, that's interesting because, and I just said at that point too, like omitting the truth when someone's asking you is a form of lying. I think I remember saying that too. And uh, he still didn't come clean about anything. And Daddy! so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did you see how easy it was for him to lie? Yeah. It's disheartening, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It honestly it's, is. And it's scary, isn't it? Yeah, because it makes, it doesn't feel calming for my nervous system. It makes me feel like I don't want to be a detective. I want to be able to trust what somebody says because that's how I am. Like, that's how I behave in my relationships. And I want the same in return. And when someone isn't behaving in that same way and like even if it was something horrible he had to tell me like I want someone to be able to be honest with me even if the outcome might be bad or even if they screwed up somehow I want that level of honesty because like how can you be in a proper relationship without that is what I think yeah um now if you hadn't looked at his location had asked those questions he would have answered what he answered and you would totally believe that all that happened was a meeting yeah so, and that's how believable he is. That's how easily he lies. It rolls off his tongue. Like, you know, it's like George Costanza from Seinfeld. It's not a lie if you believe it's true, right? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's he, a good analogy. <laughs> so I bring you back to that question. Is this the marriage that you want? Do you want no. to be married to somebody who lies to you like it's second nature? No, absolutely not. You set a standard when you guys got back together. You said no more lying. I need to be in a relationship with somebody I can trust. Right? Yeah. Are you going to stand by your word? <sighs> oh, my God. I, that feels so scary for me. Like, yes, I want to. And it feels very scary to to admit that <laughs> but what are you afraid of I have a child and so I'm afraid for my kid um it's not his dad and so they've obviously built quite a bond over the last several years um I, yeah, I'm not afraid of being alone because I've been alone before, but I guess I'm scared of starting again or 
giving up on all the greatness that's happened over the last year, I guess. Um, everything that's, that has been amazing. I'm feeling uncomfortable. It's almost like, oh, I should just give him another chance and see if he does it again kind of thing. Like, oh, it's only one time. Like, that's what I keep saying in my head because it's been amazing. I, I know that I'm creating these excuses. Like, it's been gro so great this, this last year and it's just been one time. Maybe he learned his lesson. Like, that's what I keep trying if, to tell myself in my head, right? If he learned his lesson, he wouldn't have lied after learning the lesson. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I, I suspect he just learned to be better at lying. He learned how to not get caught. Yep. That's a very good possibility. And that's horrible to think like that too. Cause it's like you're with someone that you love and everything is going great and smoothly. And you, you don't want to think that shit, they've been lying to you this whole time. <laughs> like I just, uh, but yeah, I mean, the possibility is there. Absolutely. If you go back on your standard on what you said, on what you made clear, can he ever take you seriously? No, I guess, I guess not. And that's him maybe losing respect for me in a sense too. I don't think he respected you enough already. If he, if it was so easy for him to lie to you. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> really what I want you to think about is your mental health. Just because the two of you separate doesn't mean your son and him can't still have a relationship if he wants to have a relationship with your son, right? Like, yeah. like there's, that. there's that. If they've developed a friendship and a bond, they can still hang out. Yeah, that's true. You don't need to take that away from them. This, this has everything to do with you and him, not him and your son. How old is your son? He's 10. So he can still take your son out to games and hang out with your son if he wants to. Uh, he can still show up for hockey games or whatever if he wants to. Yeah, right? very true. You know, you deciding, I don't want to be with somebody I can't trust, doesn't have to take away from their relationship. But also your son is 10. People will come in and out of his life. There will be friends that he'll have for four years that go away. Mm -hmm. There'll be teachers at school that he sees for four years in elementary school. Then he goes to high school. He doesn't see them anymore. So you don't yeah, have to true. tell yourself that, that somebody coming out of his life is going to wreck him in some way. Yeah. I guess I feel, yeah, the guilt that I feel around that is his, uh, his biological dad left when he was two and moved back to England. And so uh, this is the only other male role model he's had in his life. So it's, I guess that part is hard, but yeah, you're right. There's going to be people that come and go all the time and it's something that you have to learn to adapt to. Yeah. Even if you had set your son up with the big brother, right? The big brother organization where, mm -hmm. you know, you, you match children up with adults who can be role models to them. Even if you'd set your son up with a big brother, that, that relationship might have lasted four years. And then that person stops volunteering for the organization. And so your son no longer has that particular big brother. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, again, their relationship, you, you, if, if you decide, like, you know, look, we broke up because you lied. I set a stipulation that you can no longer lie to me because I don't want to be in a relationship where I feel unstable because I don't know if I'm getting the truth. We got back together with your promise that you would not lie again, and you did. I'm not waiting around to find out the next time and then the next time and then the next time. I've already done that. I've already been through the repetitive pattern you showed me this behavior again. I told you that was going to be the end of our relationship. You don't know why you chose that behavior. And it's not on me to figure it out. 
but it yeah. is on me to stand by my own word. It is on me to have integrity with what I say I want and need. And I need to not be in a relationship with somebody who lies to me. And that is you. And it's my mistake for staying with you, seeing as you lied to me so much, but I will not continue to stay with somebody who lies to me. That sounds, I wish I had recorded that. <laughs> sounds so good. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. That's perfect. And that's true. And that's exactly how I feel. What exactly what you just said is is how I feel. Yeah. yeah. I know it's tough, but we have to stop playing hoping games, which is where we hope they're going to change for us. He's had that chance. You gave him that chance. You removed yourself from the relationship. And he went, please, 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 don't leave me. Come back. I don't want to lose you. And you said, under the condition that you don't repeat the behavior that I left you over. Yeah. And he repeated the behavior. You hoped he wouldn't. You took him back, hoping he wouldn't repeat the behavior. And then he did. Mm -hmm. So the yep. question is, how many times will you play the hoping game? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to play like any games at all. <laughs> so yeah. like, I'm just over it because I've invested already a, quite a bit of time. And um, yeah, yeah, like it, it is like, it just shoots my nervous system. To, like I'm super like sensitive as it is, like emotionally, like I'm very emotionally sensitive to stuff and I can feel emotions and, you know, energies and stuff. And I just, I don't like that feeling of that uneasiness that comes with always having to question or wonder, or I need to ask follow-up questions just to yeah. make sure. Like, I just, I don't like that. Yeah. And that's where you will continuously find yourself in this relationship because that precedence, that history, that pattern has been established. Yeah. And that's not on you. That's on him and his choices and his behaviors. And he doesn't even want to take responsibility for that. Yeah. He did apologize after we ch chatted last night, actually. And he did apologize. But yeah, in the moment, absolutely not. Um, he what doesn't. Yeah. He avoids. What did he say? What was his apology? Uh, he said he's sorry for lying. And he still doesn't know why he chose to do that, but he did. And he apologizes for it and he wants to do better. That's sort of really it in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, so um, I don't know why I did that. Unacceptable. Apparently he went to therapy, but it did fuck all basically. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, the <laughs> this, this therapy that he went to didn't teach him anything because he's still lying and saying, I don't know why. So there's that lack of accountability and responsibility. And then saying, I want to do better. You had your chance to do better. We're no longer in a situation. If it was me, we're no longer in a situation where you wanting to do better is good enough. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw somebody say, believe his actions and not his words. And that's, that's true. Yeah. So here's the thing. I don't want you to succumb to an escalation of commitment, which is where you say, oh, I've put four years on the table. I don't want to lose the time that I invested. So I'm going to stay in this longer, hoping, there's that word again, that this is going to turn into what I need, which is... It, it, I need a trustworthy partner who doesn't lie to me. Yeah. So an, an escalation of commitment is how people gamble away their entire home. They go to the casino, they gamble. Next thing you know, they've lost $10,000. Oh my God, I can't, I can't lose $10,000. I'm going to gamble another 2000 And then they lose that, trying to win the ten back. So now they're $12,000 in. So then they gamble another $3,000 trying to win that money back. And now they're $15,000 in the hole. So are you going to be looking back in two years going, wow, now I'm six years in this and he's lying to me? 
yeah, no, <laughs> there's no way. No, yeah. I'm 40 this year. I don't have time for this. <laughs> like, there's no way. But the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. I honestly thought there was a shift and a change and everything over the past year. But uh, yeah. yeah, it sucks. And this, this, why is this such a big deal? Why is it a big deal? Like the, the, there's no, there's no understanding for you. You told him when you broke up with him before, why it was a big deal. And mm -hmm. yet here he is lying again saying, I don't know why it's a big deal. I don't know why I lie. Yeah. Yeah. So as you, if you stay in this relationship, as you catch him in more lies and lose your shit over these lies, because they disrupt your mental well-being. Every single time you do that, he's going to go, why are you being such a bitch? Why are you making such a big deal? There's, there's no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's always going to be on you to swallow the pill he's ramming down your throat. Yep. Accept my lies. Accept my lies. Accept my lies. Why are you being such a bitch? Why are you fighting with me? Why is this a big deal? Why are you yep. arguing? He definitely did not like being confronted about it or called out on it. Absolutely not. He actually ended up leaving and uh, we didn't really talk for like two days. So he got like, so that's a major he guilt thing too. You. If you can't. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I yeah. said that to him. <laughs> Because, yeah, he absolutely did punish me. You don't like being called out. And so you're going to act like a child and, like, run away and then do something that, you know, hurts me because I like closeness and he likes distance. And so he does what he knows bothers me. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so not only dismissing you, like, not only lying to your face, not only dismissing that he lied to your face. I don't know why it's a big deal. Not only not taking accountability for it, but punishing you for calling him out and saying, I know what the truth is. And I know you lied to me. So punishing you. Yeah. So nothing has changed. No, you're right. When you put it like that, like, yeah, the punishing and the, and the dismissiveness and stuff, I couldn't really put it into words like how he was like his reactions and stuff. But yeah, that's, that's exactly it. I do not advise you go forward with this, my love. No. And I've been feeling that too. So I've just been trying to reserve and keep my distance over the last little bit here and really be in my thoughts and my feelings and like how I want to um, move forward. So I thought I would get your advice and I'm so happy that you had me on here. I really appreciate it because <laughs> yeah. I really needed to talk it out. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, Lily. Um, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a book that I wrote. That I have no more assholes already. <laughs> you might need this one now. Okay. <laughs> Do you know which one this is? Uh, I just, it's just, no, what's it, that one about comeback queen? So this is the one that helps you heal after a breakup. Okay. Okay. This is the one that helps you heal after a breakup. Calm your mind and emotions. Elevate your self-worth, your self-esteem. Get your mind out of the spinning wise. Why did he do this? Why did this happen? Why didn't I what? Right? Um, yeah. Help you come through those questions to calm your mind. And then you go into no more assholes. Make sure you set no kissing for three months dating well next time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. I really appreciate it. You're so welcome. I love I appreciate you coming on. That's so courageous. <laughs> Thanks. Wish me luck, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Bye.